Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff. Our discussion about anxiety and meditation and today sleep. So I had a sort of dream the other day. Uh, I dreamt. Sometimes your dreams kind of stretch out beyond um, you know, normal time scales. Um, and I dreamt, I, I had this idea that I would go to sleep at night knowing what I know usually when I go to sleep and I would wake up in the morning and I would be unable to construct meaning. I would be unable to construct sentences and I didn't know if it was me forgetting the language of English or if it was the, the words and grammar and um, the intention were changing so quickly that I couldn't keep up but it was like it was like trying to hold on to sand it was just passing through my fingers this <laughs> the language I used to know and then I'm struggling to keep up um, and as this idea progressed, as the dream progressed, um, the pace accelerated of my forgetfulness or of change. And I was less and less capable of communicating. And it was as if the, the meanings of the words were slipping away in real time. So now the sand had become incredibly fine and it was slipping through my fingers the words as soon as they came out of my mouth were meaningless um, even though I was so confident that I knew what they meant only moments earlier and I think that the people get really people get really put off by the idea of reincarnation or rebirth um, because oh what happens after you die <laughs> Um, it's such a big mystery and people tend to invest a, an inordinate number of hours of our lives on this topic um, and it makes sense in some ways some kind of material ways but if we look at it through this lens this lens of the forgetfulness um, or this lens of change uh, carrying on outside of ourselves beyond ourselves we could imagine on the scale of days individual days that when we wake up in the morning um, this is a discrete unit right one day is another day another day um, that when we wake up in the morning what would life be like if we had to relearn our entire language all over again all our vocabulary all our communication grammar you know just the ability to pronounce things correctly and we can of course then zoom in and out or stretch this and collapse this so this idea of needing to relearn you could collapse it to the instant right I need to relearn everything in the instant, everything in the instant, which effectively you would know nothing. Or from one life to the next, I need to relearn. Or maybe one phase of life, right? As a child, I know certain things. And then as a young adult, I know certain things. And in middle age, I know certain things. And then as a senior citizen, I know certain things. But it's, they're not the same things. And I effectively need to relearn everything from scratch through each phase of our life, if that's more accessible. And I think it is for most of us. Um, but the idea is largely the same, regardless of what kind of time scale you're operating on. And if we stick to the idea of one day, because that's very, uh, that's comfortable for people, and the idea of going to sleep at night and waking up in a completely different world, that's a pretty 
um, approachable philosophical construct. How do we know that we were the same person yesterday? Like, how do I know that I don't die when I go to sleep and I enter a completely different universe and all my memories are implanted? Well, you don't. So we can start with that kind of goofy philosophical premise, thought exercise, and we can suggest that whatever we do know, so assuming we die every night and start a new life every morning, whatever we know when we wake up, that's autopilot, that's granted. <laughs> These are, this is um, what we've been equipped with before we were sent down to earth to live out one day of life. Here you go, here's your equipment. You know the language English, you're struggling to learn Hindi, <laughs> in my case. Um, you're about this old, you have these physical capabilities, you have roughly this IQ, you know these things about the world. Um, go at it, enjoy one day of life on earth. And the things that we don't know rather than being autopilot, those things are struggle. What we are trying to learn, what we are trying to capture in this new day, single day, what we attempt, what we grapple with, um, that's struggle. And the paradox of this whole equation is that we serve ourselves in the future by struggling in the present. So we struggle now, we fight now. I will learn Hindi, I will practice this vocabulary, I will practice this grammar until I get it. Um, and so I struggle and I struggle. Someone else is struggling with English. Someone else is struggling with French. They're trying to learn. And as we learn, we equip our future self. And we say, here you go, future self. Now you know French. Enjoy. <laughs> you have a new struggle for the one day on Earth. That you, you land on Earth and you find yourself comfortably equipped with the second language of French. How convenient. And it is this sort of paradox that we're, we're feeding ourselves from the present into the future, from the present into the future, from our struggle into autopilot. And this is entirely what we are trying to do with meditation. We are trying to take the present, now no longer one day, right? No longer one French lesson. Now we're taking the present in the narrowest possible construct, small as it gets, tiny sliver of time. If you can make that sliver tinier, good for you. Tinier, tinier, tinier slivers of time. Only this instant of time. The current moment, whatever that happens to be, as felt by the breath. And we're just observing that. Something we know to be fundamentally true. Okay. Breath is going in. Breath is going out. And we know that to be true. If it's true, presumably there's some value in exploring it. What that value is can't really be called out. Or somebody would have summarized it for you, right? <laughs> Instead of spending hundreds of hours meditating, you could just read the book. Oh yeah, what there is to be gained from meditation, the book. Um, and it would be a bestseller and you'd see it in airports all over the place. Not now, of course, since nobody's in airports these days. But you'd be buying it from Amazon. Um, everyone would be reading it on Goodreads. What there is to be gained from meditation, but no one would bother meditating. And what there is to be gained from meditation is this habit, this autopilot. So you are going from the struggle, this moment of struggle, into a future, maybe a whole day. <laughs> you get a whole day of autopilot for one moment of struggle. If you can really work on that one moment, 
Because what is a day but billions of moments? And so within that moment, within the next moment, within the next moment, you've accumulated this practice until you have it on autopilot. Oh, okay, I can just observe. I can be objective. I can be rational. That's the skill. And there are many other benefits as well. But that's kind of the surface level skill that you're practicing with Anapana meditation. I will talk about sleep again uh, <laughs> as it pertains to meditation and how sleep is perhaps not like meditation. Um, I don't think this was really a comparison today, but I will also put up the Anapana um, instructional uh, app installation videos as links on this video again just to help people out so that they, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to install these really simple apps um, because they don't do a lot of marketing or anything like that. So I've made a little, couple of little videos for you for that. Um, and I encourage you to try them out. Try mastering <laughs> this, this tiny, tiny moment of time um, to see if you can uh, have it on autopilot tomorrow. All right, I hope everyone is taking really good care of themselves and everyone around them. I will talk to you tomorrow.